a dose of So this is, in fact, a historic moment, and a wonderful anthology of poetry. I have the privilege of of reading my grandfather Armando Benitez's poetry. Armando Benitez is, uh, was a poet who wrote many languages. He was also a major translator, who translated from many languages, including Kannada and Bengali. Um, and he died in 1983, um, but it's a great privilege for me to read out a poem uh, that was based on his own translation. So there's, there are many layers of meaning here. My, uh, Armando Menezes translated ex very extensively. He was the first person, uh, part of a state project after 1947, he was the first person to translate thousands of vachanas, that is the great bhakti literature of, uh, of uh, Karnataka. Canada. He, he translated thousands of Vajanas into English, and so he wrote this poem, which is uh, Apre Basava, or After Basava, which is called Without Love, which was, which is one of my favorites, and was also read out at my wedding. Without Love, 1971. Without true love, nothing avails. Everything fails. A pumpkin ringed with iron cannot escape the rock. An earthen idol prayed and sung returns to dumb. A clay doll washed from day to day dissolves to clay. Ape alchemized to golden ape retains his shape. The lump of coal cleaned day and night will not grow white. The flower of the silk cotton tree is vanity. The, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but the colossal virgins, yet no less, yields bitterness. Without true love, everything fails, nothing avails. In the English role, Andre Basava. In the English in the English raw to Gothrod Gondry taken in Illini Chris Boyne Erin at Winkin Aru on Low Neil Hello Cantor Umundum Eel Kriege Scharg Megan Eelg Dirge Nitter doch law und vorbog schre, kaum in der Säule, wie an den E. Aber, und dann aber auch, kriege ich schüchert, gedeo, nick und gold der Los Dieche, wann die Regen wollschen Rieche. In der Grauen schiert der Kadosch, Kata, wisch, der Blau. Top of the world, good enough. Foss, Toshe Shadow. The machineer of raw, Targafred Ganvi. Tepin, and he'll need. Here we are at the launch of Go a Garland of Poems. And I'm reminded of Jose Salamago, the Portuguese Nobel laureate, who said, writers create a national literature, translators create world literature. <laughs> Yesterday, myself and my Kashmiri friend Rafiq Katwari were talking about translation at the University of Goa, and last night the key speeches, a lot of them were devoted to the notion of translation. Well, I was reading in a journal I subscribed to Korean Literature Today. There was a fascinating essay there 
by Professor Park, who is a professor of English in Milan. A lot of references there, a lot of footnotes. And he gave an optimistic and a pessimistic view of translation in his essay. The optimistic view is fairly obvious. In other words, by translating, in this instance, poetry of Goa into Irish, we get to know each other's history and geography, we get to know each other's tastes, something of the mentality of the people, the humor, the lifestyle, and the magic that is literature, indefinable, that indefinable magic. And surely, the optimistic view of translation says, surely this brings us all together in some understanding of our shared humanity. That might seem obvious, but it's actually all wrong, according to this professor in Milan. He takes the pessimistic view. He says that, in fact, translation doesn't change us. And he cites as an example of this the fact that there were far more literary translations being done in fascist Italy and fascist Germany than were being published by the Allies, by Britain and America. And he would state that probably the situation is the same today or even worse. So where does that leave us? Um, my head says the pessimistic view is the correct one, but my heart says that the optimistic view is the right one. And so I continue to be a poet translator and will, I think, until my last. Yeah. While I was traveling to Goa, like from Bombay to Goa, I, I was speaking to the taxi driver who, who asked me this very interesting question, which is very boring at the same time. Why do people come to Goa? What's there in Goa? I've been born and brought up here. There's nothing here. And I think as this book, when I read the poetry, it is as familiar as fish to water. So when you you, you bring in this perspective. I, I would like you to talk about how do you see the poetry that's in this book of Goa, of India? How do I view it? Well, I'm not an academic. That helps. <laughs> so, opening an anthology and I was asked to suggest a title for the anthology, and my suggestion was accepted, Goa, a garden of poems. And that refers back to the original Greek meaning of an anthology, which is a collection of flowers. So I'm looking for a special fragrance in an anthology, such as this one from Goa, and I find it, because every culture has its unique flavor and we must never succumb to a type of anemic international uh, what should I say passport type of language for poetry. Poetry must always have its own distinctive flavor uh, or else it's no longer poetry actually. You know it's it's something imitative and it's, 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 it's the flavor then is the essence. Just like in, in, in culinary uh, terms, you know, in cooking terms, Goa is, is, is famous for its flavors. And so every, every country should have its own flavor of poetry. And um, I think there are unique voices here, which are the voices of unique in individuals. So that, that that also is important, that we also transcend our cultures when we are, uh, when we give voice as poets, because we come from a past, distinctive pasts, long, a long past. In the case of Irish, it's the oldest literary language in Western Europe. But we are also, you know, like a little caterpillar on a stalk, we're also probing into the unknown, into that 
emptiness and that silence from which all creativity springs. So there are known factors and there are unknown factors. I think some American politician had this big long spiel with it, didn't he? There are the known knowns and then there are the unknown knowns and then there are the unknowns. One thing that I noticed in, in this collection of 30 poets is that of the story of the traveler. I see a lot of traveling happening within Goa, outside of Goa. Journeys being made as ancestors made them, natives, immigrants, migrants. And I, I found a lot of travel. So. That's, that's definitely um, one theme that emerges. And it's uh, something that Ireland and Goa have in common as well, because the sons and daughters of Ireland are also scattered to the four winds of the earth, uh, sometimes out of a voluntary sense of adventure, uh, but often to, um, due to involuntary uh, emigration, in the case of Ireland, often caused by famine, or if somebody stole the English landlord's sheep, off he was in a ship to Van Diemen's land, now called Tasmania. So there was a lot of immigration from Ireland, and uh, I know that Goans also, that there's a diaspora from Goa all over the world, in the United States, and elsewhere in Africa, of course. Uh, well, um, one of our uh, immigrants ended up as President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. But, that's yesterday. So should we read another poem? Let's read another poem. Yeah. Shall we invite one of the poets? Yes. something of a mystery to me uh, because we always had a kind of uh, love-hate encounter with the Portuguese language. When I grew to learn Portuguese on my own, I tried to discover why my mother didn't really rate it too highly and she called it this fish posh language, <laughs> right? But I wondered why. And I only came to know with startling realization when uh, she was uh, she was buried that uh, the plaque on her tomb uh, proclaimed her entire name, which was Alda Priya Mendonca. So this poem is a reflection of what I felt uh, when I when this realization dawned on me. Uh, the term courtyards of the heart is actually a Portuguese expression. I was trying to find it, but uh, it didn't come to me right now. But this is praia, which means uh, sea or seashore in Portuguese. Mum, you never told us your middle name was seaside. What use is it now when I see it on the cross beside your grave? To see the world in the language of the sea was not your cup of tea, but this fish fosh fusillade has tamed your son who dreams of you in the courtyards of the heart. Thank you. So, uh, this is how your poem sounds in Irish. Avam ni inish to riv doin griv kush tra mar ghara hanimat Ken vahanishe nu rekim mar gros tev le duige Nir irshe ditshe an daun ishkit i dirmin malia Arta da vak se kan sefe digl nu rush kipish pasha Ese tairu ma yaulert e glos 
host Mukhri. You know, Rochelle, um, when I was talking earlier about the um, low percentage of translations, literary translations, poetry translations found in Britain, let's say, it struck me recently that had they published over the past decade more translations from the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Irish, the German, and so on and so forth, they might never have thought of Brexit. <laughs> Another motive that I, that I see constantly in Goan poetry is the talk of the mud, the color of mud. The color of mud, red mud, red earth. So I've, I've seen that in half of the world's poetry, that nature is very elemental, very light. So, how much of Irish poetry has talks of the mud, talks of the earth, the soil, roots? I would have to say that most poetry in Irish until very recently was nothing else but nature inspired because um, the native Irish speakers weren't really allowed in the pale, in the city, cityfied areas, I'm speaking specifically of Dublin. Now there was an Irish speaking enclave in Dublin, certainly even from earlier times, but generally speaking, um, most of those who survived as Irish speakers survived in coastal areas, in rural areas, or small town fishermen and small town farmers. So, um, nature is a very strong metaphor, I think, in the poetries of both Goa and Ireland. Um, the reality that, that nature is itself, but also the moods that nature creates. Um, perhaps we have more seasonal differentiation in Ireland than you have, but um, you don't have snow, for instance. Yeah. Um, so, from early days, early Irish nature poetry uh, is very, very nature-centered, and you can hear the howling winds, and, you know, and then in springtime you can hear the blackbirds singing in the bush as well, so, yeah. And a lot of memory, you know, is running through the associations of air, water, wind, and go. A lot of the, a lot of the motives here, a lot of memories that's associated with, with the surroundings. Well, yeah, and, and that's a good thing, isn't it? And, and yes, and, and connected very politically, like Mati, which is mud. Yeah. So, yeah. so the deliberation on what does it mean to be home was very powerful. As in, that's the second thing what I realized in this little collection of just 30 poems. Maybe that's how we call uh, the second poet. Sure. Okay. I just. Sherry. Sorry, yeah. We're going alphabetically. Okay, uh, I wanted to say something, Gabriel. I think if you read the telephone directory in Irish, <laughs> it would sound beautiful. <laughs> the language seems to do half the work. Um, at poetry readings, people start by saying my poems are about, and I, I remember sitting in a really boring poetry reading. Sorry, some can be boring. And thinking, uh, my poems are about many things. My poems are about poetry festivals. My poems are written for people like you. My poems are about, uh, take shortcuts. My poems write slipstreams. My poems are needy. My poems want to be loved by people like you. My poems demand that you should memorize them. My poems want prizes. My poems won't enter competitions, but my poems want prizes anyway. My poems want to be on syllabi and curricula. My poems want to be translated into Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Telugu, Gujarati, French, Italian, Polish, Irish, Afrikaans, and American. My poems want diplomatic immunity. My poems want visa on arrival. My poems want to be burned in public, but only by, the, by men in the right clothes. My poems want exclusion from the canon 
and they want rediscovery. My poems want to be rediscovered by the next Eliot. My poems will rediscover the next Eliot. He shall know them, him by the poems he discovers. My poems want to be epi epigraphs. My poems want to be photographs of busty blondes in blue silky things. My poems challenge virtual reality. My poems are live headlines and red bottom lines. My poems want you to sit up and pay attention in pin drop silence or they will come and get you. My poems are torn from the gut and, pay, and from the heart and the amygdala and the sigmoid colon. My poems are seeds planted in your head. They will sprout when you are dead. My poems are viruses. They will replicate themselves like living things and like non-living things, they will turn into crystal. My poems are, are rogue programs. They will erase your hard drive and implode. My poems are dangerous. They can only be bought by adults who are certified as illiterate. My poems are protected by Amnesty International, should you think of doing something to them. But when you remind my poems of this protection, they laugh hollowly. My poems are wanted by Interpol. My poems are being tracked by the FBI, even as we speak. Thank God I am nothing like my poems. <laughs> Jerry, do you want to hear it in Irish? Yeah. I think you'll all have pretty good Irish after this session. When in Mochay Dawn to the Scatterody, when in Mochay Dawn to the Fair to Flirte, a Sphere Mochay Dawn to the Rui Erdenos Hain, Togan Mochay Dawn to Akira, being Mochay Dawn to a Win Cool Swan, the Mochay Dawn to an Anganahit. Is me and the Mochit Daunter, but I know this left. A real Mochit Daunter, but good for the Grand Gallery and Tadushin, O Mochit Daunter. You can read Mochit Daunter, a stacker mortis. Tadushin, O Mochit Daunter, a Rockinson. Is me and the Mochit Daunter, but a Rashomus, a Miss Elbrooklyn. Is me and the Mochit Daunter, but a strophe eared, a Hindush, Maratish, Tamilish, Telemush, Kushavartish, Germanish, Frankish, and Dolish, Polish. Afrikaanisch, er is Amerikaanisch. Dat de luine hij de oorlogte te staat om een gedaante. Dat wiese om een gedaante en achter stacht door. Is meer om een gedaante genoof ik op februari dag. Vierde verhaal en gaan en zei ze, gaat eerder Grieken. Is meer om een gedaante nog na roof in Margrieten gaan nog niet gevoel. We waren om een gedaante, we toek ik een geert Elliot Elle Orre. Toek ik om een gedaante en een geert Elliot Elle over E en mag ik dan te hem zoen. Is min mag ik dan te wijnen een epigraaf. Is min mag ik dan te wijnen een reenraf doen van al vreen hartstikke en wil niet in mijn schiet lukken. Toen mag ik dan te doelhaan dan werd er het eer roer. Is kamerlijn te bjoog, is bonlijn te dergen hier mag ik dan te. Is min mag ik dan te besief van hier, is eerste trus en tost al voor Toen is het zo teurig. Daar je over mag je dan tussen hini, ik is als een grie, ik is als een angelde, ik is als een droom het mooie. Is schiet de kruig die jou niet mag je dan te. Die er kijk schiet naar de geil verhoog. Is wies je het mag je dan te. Echt voor huis je niet heen, maar nee bij jou. Bijgens kunnen hen naam je ooit het, maar daar zit dan een ompo in een kristel. Klaar is mag je dan te. Schrijf je de hemel aan kroeg, ik is in vlees geschiet. Dan mag je dan te dan schrijven. Eerst ik gewoon het aan niet te zien er. Eerst ik heb het hastig naar de etorico. Dan mag je dan te aangezet. Ik ben dus die international. Ach, maar we hebben hier een tweeën door. Niet wat je te horen hebt. Kijk je moet hier kijken. Dan mag je dan te aanlopen bij Interpol. Dan aanlopen mag je dan te aanlopen bij de FBI. Niet in mijn stukken zullen mag je dan te doen. Was it difficult at all to translate any poem? I know you sent some some poems back to me. I don't remember which, but well, there were a few words there in Jeremy's poem, uh, for instance, uh, that are technical. 
My poems are torn from the gut and the heart and the amygdala. If that's how you pronounce it, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I had to look that one up. <laughs> uh, because that's not a normal current conversation. So, this is the first time that that word has been ever used in the Irish language. <laughs> you'll find yes! It, yes, so there you go. You'll find it in word banks. <laughs> and you had to create the word in Irish. I didn't have to create it, it was there. We have, we have a very large word bank of new terminology. Uh, at least 25,000 words have been added in the past 10 years, including that one. Um, but it's the first time I've in a poem. I remember as well my good friend, uh, Dilly Javeri, uh, many of his poems also had uh, technical words uh, from the realms of science in particular, astronomy and so on that uh, wouldn't be part of my day-to-day -day vocabulary, but uh, I found them in, 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 in our technological word banks and was delighted to use them uh, in, in a poetic context for the first time. Um, we, we usually try to go for a native term in the Irish language, whereas I notice in many other languages uh, they, they use some kind of just an international spelling, for instance the word computer, you find computer in many, many languages, just as it is, whereas the Irish computer is reavited, which doesn't, of course, sound like a computer at all, because it's just, um, we, we go back to the root and the meaning of the word, to come to commute or to compute, and, uh, and use a native term for it, yeah, a native root. So where do we go from here? Maybe um, our next point, yes. please. Uh, I really thank uh, my friend Mr. Gabriel for helping my poet to cross <coughs> the frontiers of my language in the country. It's a very short poem. Title is Boom or You. You must be remembering me. You must be remembering me. Looking at the spring's full moon all alone in the sky. You must be remembering me. Looking at the spring's full moon all alone in the sky. You must be waiting for me, burning the lamp of your soul on your heart's threshold. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. And the Irish sounds somewhat tosser, somewhat like the Concali tune. Ni fuar no gulto a swir varum a branu a jilach lawn an eric le hain suspir ni fuar no gul fehru bati lander damam er lasa er harsha to free. drunk in the village of Bougainvillea, Asaka. He created lore through his breath and birth laced with alcohol. Now the roads are barren and bare, tumultuous in their climb. There is one dusty Kadamba state bus that we get off from. We walk toward Mr. Dias' home, good man of the village, father of three, a story of his avant-garde love marriage that is now passé. His garden is the largest with sprawling tropical flowers. He invites us to tea or wine, but not to stay in his large empty house of unused rooms. There is no hotel in Asagaon, not even a homestay. 
No tourists come here, he says. There is nothing but history amidst its living, listening years. The pain of memory against last names, ancestral houses. My mother tells me my grandfather's house fell to ruins and had to be sold for a pittance. I hear tales from Uncle Dias that my grandfather wrote long pages of poetry. He wrote plays for the church. He went to Portugal and returned with shining beads for all the women. Summer glow, turning coats into tales. From my mother, I hear of how he drank night and day and beat up everyone. How she and her brother ran around in the buns, loafing in lanes, floundering in their Portuguese, and how she swam with the buffaloes in the stream or climbed trees and fell like an orphan. We hear stories, contradictory sometimes, time-lapse, unchronicled, and not of my grandfather after a while, as much as of memories refined and redefined, salted, marinated, left to dry in the hot golden sun, plucked like flesh of salt fish and eaten with boiled curry and rice. I don't recall my grandfather. He died a year before I was born. I don't visualize what it would have been to know him. Drunk? A poet? Or was he someone else? Did poetry and liquor fill up his glass differently? Stories sometimes are better. It fills us up with water. Distance the best carrier. Time the best editor. Creation theories. Rumors of how we were born. and transcreated into Irish, which is sometimes called Gaelic, but we prefer to use Gaelic for our sister language spoken in the, the islands of Scotland, Hebrides. Be Mahanael and Potter, Popo, destroyed by the Ambuge Ville Esagau, Rahikshe Shanachas, Legach and all the Spruch, Alcohol Trilla. Long skier do the shield the boy and rap a sacrilege. Top bus down a hole of all, bus start candle by all the door and gay meat. Surely made it through heat, Mr. Dias, our cart in the water. To a party again, the skill to get in a force of draw at our passage. You say it on board in a small, blah on a trope, put the wood. Kulchen te in ochen fina wikach, nichen van achts and orals follow, is the show me yonach, do us hard to reel. Nile in Ostarn in Asago, nor Coney in a tiger hound, ni hagen trusori in Shagashe, ni frack out a style mask, no gloss bios in the gaste, peen, queen, sling to Tedeshin Shur. In shame of all her dunger, it tail my yado as a shade, I was beer a yeder thing in ee. Kushum skirto could die as Kuskir, Mayado, Lahani Gata Flirte, Homoxe, draw me in a hain havishe, Huikon a Portugale, a Vestile, Kurnini, Lunga, the Bumanaga Age, Clapola Saurig, Cote Yanum Poon, the Skirto. Kushum on Boha could all a share home could do, a Viscahina, Vatharolige, Ehena Visitara, every heart in a buns, a monal heart in a lawny. A strachel delivered but in Gaelish. Yes, my now she does the balls as her own, no queen is up, I was titting my heel of them. Clashing skilter, free water had a whiff, I can light a nachin kahe, I was a bow. Neither me at all here needs more, queenie skunker, I was a high vinehe, sighted, more mighty hair, I'll dream of a shin. Yal Goa, Pilka Marafukfa Eosk Saite, I was Italy, Kuri Bede, is Rish. Irene Hina Gomariado, Kaila Rebrian Solo Rubabe, Nihoni in Kurzavarche, Aina Horet, El Meshkin, Ili Ili, non din Elavia, El Dino Hotwinner, Jogus Briert, El Valley de Ferulo, is far over into the Skelter, Lintershin, and lost the Hishke. And Tacher and Tumpro is far, and Town and Tigerhor is far. Cherokee and Kraha, roughly ve cruz a selection.
so in these in these five minutes of time, should we just tell them that there are 20, 20 copies out there, 30, poem, 30 poets, 9 translators, plus Gabriel Rosenstock, and, and just 15 books in stock. 